Holy crap. You know, it's funny, I spent all this time reinforcing this crazy thing. And uh, I have these metal screws and this really thick acrylic. And uh, it just kind of is really scary now. <laughs> because if it does fly apart, it's actually going to be really dangerous. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm thinking I may have to add some shielding before uh, continuing to test this much more. Because there's no safe place to be when all four sides are wide open. <laughs> I'll do a quick test just to show how it's working at the moment. Interestingly, I would swear it kind of evens itself out. Like it seems to dance around a bit when it's in its slower speeds, and then when it starts speeding up, I feel like it evens out more. Well, it was a lot of work, but I have these sheets of polycarbonate cut out and uh, I'm going to initially affix them with hot glue to this frame to handle the nuance alignments and then I'll probably uh, I think I might wrap some sheet metal around the corners give it a nice look hopefully and uh, put some sheet metal screws through or something like that well I have these three sides of polycarbonate in place and I have my uh, power mounted right here However, a couple screws flew off from the top. I'm only filming this because I wanted to get the intermediate stage recorded. I do have to admit that this project is far more elaborate than I had initially envisioned, but it makes sense to add the safety shielding. There are all the guts. Again, not a whole lot to it. I've been making these strips of metal from some old metal roofing that I had laying around. And uh, I just needed something a little bit stronger than my normal sheet metal for duct work. Alright, so I measured about halfway and I'm going to put a couple score lines in here really quickly just to uh, make a mark of where I want to bend this. It's actually surprisingly rigid, a little bit more than I expected. So you can see right here, I'm going to be affixing it to these edges, and I'll also run some strips over the top. After much effort, I have this essentially done, and uh, I'll show you guys how it opens. I have a couple hooks here just for grabbing, and I waxed all of these edges. And as you can see, it took many attempts to get this polycarbonate to play nicely. This stuff is really, really strong, and the more threads you drill into it, because I don't have a tap small enough for this, the more resistance there is, and so it snapped off the tops of these several times. <laughs> so, really strong stuff. And this is how it opens. So, very simple. All right, now I am actually done. I can't believe it, but I'm actually done. <laughs> I uh, put some long wood screws through here, and I put some, uh, some hex screws over here with washers, and I realized that I don't really need any kind of uh, lock nut because they'll cut into this uh, fan itself acting as a kind of lock nut. So this is actually much weaker uh, in terms of handling vibration, but I don't have a good solution because I can't access it from underneath very well, and I don't really want to deal with that. So, it's good enough for now though. I did a measurement already, and uh, in spite of how unbalanced it is, I was surprised to find this reaches 4500 RPM. Uh, which is pretty good considering it's uh, a computer fan. <laughs> and also, it wouldn't take that much effort for me to grab another one of these, so that I could essentially double the speed or get it close to that. But for now, this is fine. I had seen a video by Robert Murray Smith, who is an awesome inventor, and he posts all this stuff on YouTube pretty much. And he had made one of these with a drill. And in the video, he actually says, he thinks that the drill goes up to 30,000 RPM. So I thought that was a little suspicious. I looked around online and I couldn't find a single drill that gets anywhere near that. In fact, the fastest drills that I was seeing were around 3,000 RPM. So, I believe that he was actually successfully centrifuging his, his uh, materials at only 3,000 RPM, if that. 
which oh. makes me think that I actually don't need it to be very fast. You know, as far as a centrifuge goes, this is actually a very slow one. I mean, it could be slower, of course, but it's very slow considering how fast a lot of them go. I believe class one centrifuges are up to 10,000 RPM. Then beyond that, you get class two, three, four, something like that. So this is just a class one. And I don't think I could even, with this type of situation, get it up to class two. So I, I thought I would test this, even though it's not very well balanced. I think that it would be fine to test with at this point. Believe it or not, that was probably only around 1400 RPM, just to give you an idea of how fast this is spinning. So that was only about a third of, of how fast it can go roughly. I didn't want to kick it all the way up because my hand is right in front of it. <laughs> I'm still pretty paranoid about this thing flying apart. <laughs> wow. You know, after all of this, I actually forgot to test whether I could get these cups in here very easily. It's tight for sure, but I can still get them in. Whoops. And I haven't tested this with any kind of load at all yet. I guess I could do a quick test before I really send it to full power. That's actually not that bad. Looks like I can actually record this pretty well through the polycarbonate. So I'll go ahead and do a full speed test with load. Whoa, holy shit. Holy shit. Look at that. Uh, wow, I didn't anticipate that. It appears what actually happened, which is a real deal breaker with these sample cups, is that uh, there was so much momentum against the liquid contents that it actually caused there to be so much pressure it exploded. So basically this sample cup actually failed. Like it's not even like this part failed or some other part of my centrifuge failed. The actual sample cups can't handle that speed. I did not anticipate that. Holy cow. Well on the bright side I know that my uh, protective shields work really well. Holy crap. <laughs> I can't believe that the cups exploded from the from the pressure of the liquid against them. I think uh, I think the lesson here is I cannot do 60 milliliters at a time. I'm gonna have to cut it in half and try 30 milliliters or about one ounce. Every time I do a video of this I think that it's gonna work this time <laughs> and something always explodes. <laughs> Okay, for this attempt I'm doing 30 milliliters each and I double wrapped the uh, lid itself in electrical tape just on the off chance maybe one of these like slipped off, flew out, like, like maybe it unthreaded and then uh, the other one crashed into it. So maybe it wasn't a, an issue of the momentum and integrity of the bottom. But I figured this will help rule it out. This will prevent it from uh, unthreading and then flying off potentially and uh, it should also help reinforce it in case it's slipping through the hole which I don't think it's what's happening because it's way too big to fit through that hole at this point. 